School districts across the state are facing budget deficits for the next two years. The reasons why come back to declining enrollments and the impacts of the pandemic. Reporter Pafui Yang explains why schools are hoping the legislature will adopt a budget soon. With about 38,000 students, the Anoka Hennepin School District is the state's largest. And during a year the district projected enrollment growth, COVID-19 had the reverse effect. We were 1,000 kids less starting out the year. We had also projected we were going to grow. Elementary students account for the largest share of decline as many families opted for private schools or homeschooling. Enrollment shortage meant a loss of about $10 million in revenue for Anoka Hennepin. Because of the reduction in, in enrollment and the projections moving forward, we're projecting that we'll get it back about 20% of those kids we lost last year. The district's chief financial officer, Michelle Vargas, says staffing was cut due to enrollment declines, not because they needed to make budget reductions. But Vargas says the district will carry about a $5.5 million deficit into next school year, which is a larger deficit than it would normally have. While federal dollars can backfill some of the costs, the district is waiting to see what happens at the legislature to get better guidance on where money should be allocated. Depending on when we're opening in the fall, what it's like, are we still buying the personal protective equipment? You know, PPE. We weren't really budget budgeting for more of that. We don't know in the fall, are we still wearing masks and providing masks and those type of things. Vargas says right now, Anoka Hennepin's deficit is manageable because it can fall back on its fund balance. However, the district hopes lawmakers can agree on a funding plan soon before the school has to adopt a budget in June. We don't know what our funding is yet. So everything's based on assumptions and what we could get. Pafu Yang, CCX News. The Wyzetta School District is also estimating a revenue shortage of about $9.2 million. The shortage also stems in large part from an enrollment decline. As the weather is heating up, the City of Golden Valley is working with the Minneapolis Park Board on a plan to keep Theodore Worth Park safe. The park is located in both Minneapolis and Golden Valley, and last summer illegal activities happening at a beach in the park brought the issue to the forefront. There were reports of drug use and nudity, as well as other concerns from residents like too much traffic and litter left behind on an unofficial beach. This week, the City Council approved a memorandum of understanding that will help manage the shoreline of Twin Lake and develop a public safety response plan for Theodore Worth Park. City Council members expressed a desire to get this document in place before the summer. Also out of the Golden Valley City Council this week, a decision the police chief called a no-brainer. Hennepin County and the Golden Valley Police Department will partner together to employ a social worker to respond to mental or behavioral health 911 calls. Council members said during the meeting that they've received a lot of feedback about this issue from the community. City staff say the intent of the program is to eliminate disparities in police interactions between those who experience mental health crisis and people of color. The agreement will run through the end of next year. The Hennepin County Board adopted the county's first climate action plan this week with an ambitious goal of achieving net zero greenhouse gas emissions by the year 2050. One aspect of that plan is to reduce food waste. Now, there may be a lot of food scraps from the kitchen area, from the food prep area, and instead of throwing those in the trash and having those go to the landfill where they generate methane, you know, they can divert that and again, send it either maybe to food to hogs or send it to a compost site. Hennepin County businesses like this Maple Grove Daycare and Early Learning Center are being encouraged to reduce waste by doing more with organics recycling. Casa de Corazon has already started using reusable storage bags to heat baby food and using recyclable baby bottles. Now, thanks to a grant, they are composting too. And so if we can remove that from the trash and turn it into compost instead, it, it makes a big difference for the climate. Hennepin County businesses are currently recycling about 50% of solid waste. The goal is to reach 75%. A Brooklyn Center neighborhood hit hard by the recent protests and civil unrest is also home to several restaurants. Reporter Delane Cleveland takes a look at one popular spot that stayed open through it all. 
On the outside, Brooklyn Center's Pump and Munch looks like your basic gas station. And three cheese and sour cream. But on the inside... Thank you. You'll find Yasmin Hernandez frantically working to fill food orders. Ten pieces, right? I had chicken wings. Chicken tender, chicken leg, chicken bread. She's one of the employees of Crispy Crunchy Chicken. It's very good. A restaurant within Pump and Munch that serves as proof the chicken tacos. that people can yeah. find good food in the most unlikely of places. Just because it's gas station food doesn't mean it's not good. I mean, you have to try it for you to know if it's good or not. Crispy Crunchy Chicken opened in Brooklyn Center six months ago, and it's amassed Thank you. quite the following in that short period of time. It's quick and convenient. There's not a lot of choices in the neighborhood, so it's nice to actually be able to get something fresh and that's actually decent. While fried chicken may be front and center, the menu goes well beyond poultry. Macaroni and cheese, red beans, and everything. And unlike some restaurants, Hernandez waits until an order comes in before tossing the food on the grill or putting it in the deep fryer. I make an order by order. It's more hot, more crispy, more fresh. Yet the fact that the restaurant is still intact is somewhat of a surprise to customers. Yeah, it is surprising because like they hit all the other places. Yeah, definitely. It's nice to see too that the store didn't get tore up actually. Like a lot of the places actually across the street. The Pump and Munch is located right down the street from the Brooklyn Center Police Station where protesters demonstrated for more than a week over the police killing of Dante Wright. And crispy, crunchy chicken stayed open through most of the unrest. For now, the area is mostly back to business as usual. Thank you, sir. Have a good day. And in this small corner gas station, Hernandez can keep serving up comfort food to people in a neighborhood that's seen its fair share of stress.